In this video, we're going to take a look at the new upgraded Anchor Solix F3800+. We're going to run through the stats and features. We're going to explore how it integrates with Anchor's smart home power kit and solar panels. We'll address one of the issues other reviewers have pointed out about this unit. We're going to try to answer the question, who is this designed for? And I'm going to give you my final thoughts after testing so many of these units like this over the years. So let's jump in. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. Now, backup power, it's a critical component of preparedness, and this unit fits into a category of units that can actually integrate directly into your home. Now, before we jump into this video, I do want to let you know up front that this video is sponsored. One of the conditions I let all companies know up front when doing these types of videos is that I will share my findings when I test these units, whether good or bad. And I'm not trying to push this product in these reviews, but rather I'm trying to provide information if you're in the market for a system like this one. Now, if you are interested in checking out this unit, I'll post a link in the description and comment section below. All right, so this is the Anchor F3800 Plus, and they rolled out the previous model, the Anchor F3800, over a year ago, and it was their first foray into the whole home battery backup market. Now, the F3800, it did face some criticisms, mostly around their solar input configuration, and to their credit, they listened to the customers, and in this upgraded plus model, they applied the changes. But did they actually succeed? We're going to talk about that in this video. Now, I've been monitoring various reviews over the last few weeks of this unit, and one of the complaints that has come up is the idle consumption rate of this inverter. We'll talk about that a little more in the video because after testing four of these units, I actually got a lot different results than what I'm seeing online, which I'll share with you momentarily. Now for this video, we're also going to go beyond just a review of the Anchor F3800 and we'll also show the Anchor Smart Home Panel, how it integrates into a breaker panel, the backup battery add-on option, and their solar panels, stats and features. Let me start by running down the stats and capabilities. Now at first glance, the F3800 Plus may look similar to the original F3800, but they made some big updates on this unit. One of the standout improvements is its expanded solar input capacity. The original F3800 had a more limited solar input range, accepting lower voltage levels, often restricting flexibility and solar configurations, requiring parallel connections. But to their credit, Anchor listened to the customer feedback and addressed this limitation with the F3800+. Plus. The new model can now accept up to 165 volts and 1600 watts per port with two ports available, meaning that you can go up to 3,200 watts of total solar charging potential. Now, the significant upgrade makes it easier to connect high voltage solar arrays for faster and more efficient charging. As far as the AC output, the inverter can output 6,000 watts pure sine wave with 240 volt split phase capability. You've got six 120 volt 20 amp plugins, one 120 volt 25 amp TTR RV plug, and one 240 volt 25 amp four prong twist locks. Now there are standard DC outputs on the front as well. Additionally, it has a built-in neutral ground bonding, which allows you to directly charge electric vehicles or EVs without additional grounding accessories or transfer switches. It features a built-in NEMA 1450 outlet that can output up to 6,000 watts at 240 volts, allowing you to connect your EV charging cable directly to the power station. Now, the other similar units I've tested in the past require a ground neutral plug in order for the unit to be able to charge an EV directly. You can connect up to six Anchor Solix BP3800 expansion batteries to a single Anchor Solix F3800 Plus, expanding its capability from 3.84 kilowatt hours to a total of 26.9 kilowatt hours. As shown here, I have one expansion battery on the unit. And if you have two Anchor units, you could go up to 53.8 kilowatt hours of battery capacity with their add-on batteries. Now, one of the features of their smart home panel is that it directly integrates into an existing critical load panel. In contrast, other backup battery solutions we've covered on the channel with the option of their smart home panel are designed to allow you to add circuit breakers directly into their units. This unit does not allow for that. One is not necessarily better, but rather it's the approach that Anchor has taken. How you configure this setup, it's up to you. I have the Anchor smart home panel tied into the grid and two F3800s are connected to solar. I only use a grid if the batteries go too low in the event there's not enough solar charging. If the grid goes down, the two F3800s will take over and power everything connected to the smart panel. Or you can configure this setup to be off-grid only using solar power. A third option is if you live in a location where your utility charges more during peak hours, 
And for most municipalities, this is from four to nine, the system can provide power from the batteries, thus saving you money, aka power arbitrage. There are many options, but you can configure this in multiple ways. Now regarding solar, the installation was straightforward. Each solar array connects using a proprietary connector connecting to MC4 connectors from solar to the high voltage DC ports of the F3800+. Now these ports provide a broad voltage range, 11 to 165 volts, providing flexibility for a variety of solar configurations. And whether you have large series connected panels or multiple smaller arrays, the F3800 Plus adapts easily. Now additionally, these units also have an automatic wake up feature when solar power becomes available. The unit begins charging as soon as sunlight is detected. And this comes in handy if you were to drain the batteries overnight. Once the sun comes up, they'll accept solar without needing to be manually reset. Now regarding weight and mobility, it's definitely heavy at 132 pounds, but it has wheels and a suitcase handle that extends out, allowing you to easily move it around. Now let's focus on a question that I get often. Can the F3800 Plus reliably power our well pump? I've had this system set up with solar for over two weeks now powering the well. With two F3800 Plus units connected, we have achieved a combined output of up to 12,000 watts. This well only uses about 2,000 watts, so one of these units will easily power the well as one F3800 Plus unit can output 6,000 watts. So if you have a well, as long as it doesn't draw more than 12,000 watts or 50 amps at 240 volts, a system like this would have the power to easily power it. One of the most practical improvements with the new model is the generator input feature. There's a new port here on the side of the Plus model. Now, as you can see, the original F3800 did not have this generator port. The new port is designed for the upcoming Anchor Solix Smart Generator that they're gonna be releasing later this year. Now, the port will allow direct integration between the Anchor to communicate directly with the new Smart Generator. In case of prolonged cloudy weather or low solar output, we can fast charge the units with a standard gas generator using the 240 volt input on the side. This plugin will allow you to connect a gas generator and it does require this special generator input adapter which is sold separately. One note, if you charge only the Anchor F3800 Plus from a generator, it can only pull 3300 watts. And if you have the add-on battery while charging, it can pull a combined 4300 watts. But if you have a second add-on battery, which we don't have, the company informed me that the Anchor would pull a combined 6,000 watts. It's also worth noting that if you're charging the Anchor with 6,000 watts of AC input while simultaneously putting a load of 6,000 watts on the Anchor, it will output 6,000 watts in a pass-through capacity. As you can see here, I'm sending power from a gas generator that's outputting 6,000 watts, or 240 volts at 25 amps, through the Anchor F3800 to power this EV. Now the power is coming directly from the gas generator, which passes to the anchor going directly to the car. Now Anchor's mobile app integration also proved valuable. The app provides real-time monitoring of battery status, power input output, and other key metrics. It also allows remote control via Wi-Fi, making it convenient to manage the system or adjust settings without needing to access the units directly, especially useful during extended outages or when away from home. Idle power consumption. Let's discuss idle power consumption, which is how much AC power the inverter in this unit draws just by being turned on, even if it's not powering anything. Now, one review of these units from a reputable source said it used 112.5 watt hours per hour, which is admittedly extremely high. Now, I ran multiple tests on this new F3800 plus the original F3800 model. And I didn't just test two of the models, but rather four of them, three of the F3800 Plus and one F3800 unit in my initial testing. I found these units only use 75.2 watt hours per hour, not 112 watt hours per hour. And I asked Ben from Minuteman Prepping, who also reviews these, and he got the same value as I did. Now, when I brought my findings to Anchor after running my tests, to their credit, they applied updates to the unit via software update. So I refilmed this part of the video and reran the test. And with their new software update, it drained to only 76% after 24 hours with AC on, which means it now uses 38.4 watt hours per hour, which is extremely low for an inverter this size. Having said that though, here's how the Anchor F3800 Plus stacks up against two closest competitors, all of which run 240 volt split phase inverters. The EcoFlow Delta Pro 3, it has a 3600 watt inverter, the Idle Draws 50 watts, the Jackery 5000 Plus, it has a 7200 watt inverter and the idle draw is 85 watts. The Anchor F3800 Plus has a 6000 watt inverter and the idle draw is 38.2 watt hours per hour. 
Additionally, the AC output panel is intelligent and will automatically shut down if no load is connected after 15 minutes of being turned on. So it will not consume power for a long period of time without a load. But you can override that in the app to require it to stay on for up to 24 hours. So what does this mean for the Anchor? The Anchor is extremely efficient when compared to these comparable size units. And for a unit with a 240 volt inverter, 38.2 watts of drain per hour is very low for this inverter size. But it is worth pointing out over a 24 hour period, that adds up to about 921 watt hours of battery drain if you're not powering anything. Which is worth keeping in mind if you plan on leaving the unit on for extended periods of time, like during outages or off-grid use. I'll talk more about that in my summary at the end of the video. And the bottom line is that it's a step up from the previous Anchor models. It has a very low idle consumption for an inverter this size, which I definitely give them credit for. Final thoughts. I just ran through the main specs for this unit, showed my setup and addressed an issue others are pointing out. So here are my final thoughts after reviewing several units like this model that have similar capabilities. First, let's talk about who this unit is for. This channel focuses on emergency preparedness, so obviously I look at these units from this perspective, but this unit can also provide a very real and practical use for those wanting to save money on their electricity bill. And this is obviously one of those systems that fits into this category of whole home integration. And while I showed my setup with the Anchor Smart Home Panel, you could easily set up a 240 volt transfer switch and tie this into your home if the grid were to go down. But with their Smart Home Panel, it's a much tighter and practical integration if you need something for everyday use to power specific lines in your home if you want to save money when combined with solar panels. Now, this unit cannot push power back to the grid, but you can power your home on a daily basis, thus offsetting your electricity bill. That's what I'm using my setup for. I have this configured to only use the power it gets from solar and it doesn't use grid power. When reviewing products like these, I try to look at these as something that I could use on everyday scenario and for emergencies. And this fits both categories and that's how I personally use it. But you're gonna want to, at a minimum, add at least one expansion battery if you're using this to back up your home. The unit ships with a 3.9 kilowatt hour capacity, which is a bit on the smaller side, but with two units tied into their Anchor Smart Home Panel, you could expand up to a total of 54 kilowatt hours, which is a lot of backup power. And with a 12,000 kilowatt output from these two combined, you could power the critical loads in your house easily. If I were in the market for something that is portable and want to take it camping or just to power some basic tools or other basic stuff, this would be overkill. The F3800 Plus has a 6,000 watt inverter, which is definitely on the larger side. Something like the smaller Anchor 1500 can output 1500 watts and would be great for smaller needs. Think about it this way. If you're trying to decide between buying a car to commute to work, you'd want something efficient because you're not really putting a significant load on it. But you would want a larger pickup truck if you need to haul around heavy loads. A truck, it's gonna require a lot more fuel to power the engine, but it can do things the smaller vehicle cannot. In the same way, the F3800 Plus can handle a heavier load than the 1500 unit, but it has a larger idle drain compared to the smaller unit. In other words, stick to what will power your needs. The larger the inverter, the more it's gonna cost and the more idle consumption it will have, but it can perform much more. Also, one factor I did not mention in this video is a company. Now, I get emails daily asking me to review solar generators, and I tend to stick with established, reputable brands. And I do this because I've seen a lot of small companies pop up, they market heavily, and then they disappear, leaving their customers stranded for support and without a way to warranty their products. Anchor has a long track record in the personal battery market, so they're not going anywhere. I anticipate that they're gonna be rolling out new products over the next few years, so I have no issue recommending this product for those needing backup power for their home. Overall, I like the unit and have permanently integrated this setup into our well house, powering our well on a daily basis. I recently read a comment on one of my videos and someone pointed out that while I do these reviews are interested in seeing the long-term integration and how it performs. Well, since it's now a permanent setup, I can get back to you in the future on how it performs over time. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to post it below in the comments. Also, I'll post a link in the description and comment section if you wanna check out this setup. As always, stay safe out there.